Algebra 2 Crim, New York State Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, High Order Polynomials, Question 14, Solve a Polynomial Equation Using the Zero Product Property. Inbox me at kneemedicine at gmail.com to order complete Crim sessions. Question 14, solve a polynomial equation. And I want you to note that when you're prompted to solve a polynomial equation, you're not just required to simply factor. You actually have to figure out the value of the variable, which is usually denoted as x. What is the solution set for this equation? x plus 3 squared times 1 minus x times x minus 2, not x minus 2, x squared minus 4, is equivalent to zero. Is it going to be A? Now this portion is really exciting. I'm going to quickly give you a crash course in how to speak set notation. Okay, this curly bracket is read the set. Usually you would have an X in a vertical bar like this, but it's not denoted here, which is fine as well. The set of X, so the X variable such that is what the vertical bar would represent if it were um, depicted here. x is equivalent to 3, negative 3, x is equivalent to 1, or x is equivalent to, to 2. Is it going to be 2, the set of x, such that um, x is equivalent to 1, x is equivalent to 2, or x is equivalent to 3? Is it going to be 3, the set of x, such that x is equivalent to negative 2, x is equivalent to 1, x is equivalent to 2, or x is equivalent to 3, or is the answer going to be 4? The set of x such that x is equivalent to negative 3, x is equivalent to negative 2, x is equivalent to 1, or x is equivalent to 2. Definitely press pause if you need to, and I'll give you a moment to think. Okay, so the first place that we're going to start um, conceptually is the zero product property. And the zero product property states that for all real numbers, we'll call one number A and we'll call number B when A and B are factors that produce um, a product of zero, either A is equivalent to zero, B is equivalent to zero, or both A and B are equivalent to zero, okay? And we can apply this concept to basically factoring polynomials. And so we're given a polynomial that's partially factored, and this polynomial is six order. We're gonna count the um, powers of x. Well, here we have two powers of x. x to the first is one power, so it's third order overall, and another two powers of x. Actually, it's uh, fifth order. Okay, so we have a fifth order polynomial, and it's great that they did some of our work for us, and they gave us separate factors, because if we were to start off from, you know, the original high order polynomial, um, and we'd probably have to use binomial expansion or something, okay? All right, so yes, and it's convenient because it's equivalent to zero. This equation is a set equivalent to zero, and this is typically the format, or this is the format when we're solving our polynomial equations, our factors multiplied by each other is equivalent to zero, okay? And we're going to finish factoring again by using the zero product property. Well, if we look at the first factor, um, we're going to notice that it's a square of this space, x plus three, so we can just write that out twice. Then one minus x, we're not gonna do anything with that, but this is pretty neat because we have x squared minus 4, okay? And so basically to factor this quadratic, because it is a quadratic, because it's second order in the x, we're going to use the difference of squares um, formula, which says that if you have a minus b, a squared minus b squared, well, our a squared is x, we have our minus sign, and our b squared is 4 because the square root of four is two, that factors into a plus b times a minus b. And notice here that the factors are just conjugates of each other, meaning they have the same monomial terms and they're separated by um, addition 
or subtraction, hence being conjugates of each other, okay? All right, so yes, I think we can continue on from here. Now, what we're going to have to do is write four separate equations to solve for x. And the reason why we're not writing five separate equations is because the first uh, factor that was um, back further factored is redundant. x plus 3, x plus 3, we don't need to write that twice, okay? So x plus 3 is equivalent to 0, and we're using the zero product property specifically here. We're setting all our factors to 0. We're going to assume that all the factors are equivalent to 0, okay? And if one of our guesses is incorrect, we can use a guess and check method, which we kind of sort of don't have to do here because this is a multiple choice question and we'll just know by looking at the answer choices which answers are correct and which answers aren't. 1 minus x is equivalent to 0, x plus 2 is equivalent to 0, and x minus 2 is equivalent to 0. Now we can go ahead and start to simplify. So when we carry over 3 to the uh, right-hand side, we get that x is equivalent to negative 3. This further becomes x is equivalent to 1 because we carry x over to the right-hand side. And just to keep things um, parallel in our depiction, we flip the equation and, you know, brought x over to the left-hand side and the numeral 1 over to the right-hand side. We get that x is equivalent to negative 2 and we get that x is equivalent to 2, okay? So this uh, correlates with um, answer choice 4. Therefore, the correct answer is answer choice 4. And our solution set is the set of x such that, I'm just pretending x in a vertical bar is written, x is equivalent to negative 3, x is equivalent to negative 2, x is equivalent to 1, and x is equivalent to 2. So lots of love, lots of luck, good luck studying, you're going to do great. Thanks for tuning in.